Hello. In this video, we want to find the vapor pressure of a water solution in which we've dissolved 100 grams of the sugar glucose. And we want to find this particular vapor pressure at 32 degrees centigrade. The formula that we need to use is as follows, that the actual vapor pressure with P sub H2O is going to be equal to X sub H2O. This is the mole fraction of water times the P naught, which is the vapor pressure of pure water. So sometimes when we have a formula like this, it is helpful to write out in words what each of the symbols means. So in this case, this is the vapor pressure of the solution, or the solvent in the solution. This X sub H2O is the mole fraction of water. And our P naught H2O is the vapor pressure of pure water. So we can understand what is going on in the sense that since the mole fraction of the solvent is a maximum of one, so it's one or less, it tells us that the vapor pressure of the solution will be reduced from what it would be for the pure solvent. Another way to understand that exact relationship that we saw in the formula is to uh, plot as a graph the actual pressure of the solution versus the mole fraction of water. And if we do that, we would notice that we would get a straight line. And an important thing is that the slope of this line, so slope, is actually equal to the vapor pressure of pure water. The next step in the solution of the problem is to determine the mole fraction of water. And to do that, we need to figure out how many moles of water are present and how many moles of glucose are present in our solution. So first we can start with our 1,000 grams of water. And we want to convert this to moles. And we know that the molar mass of water is 18.015 grams of water. And we notice that if we do the calculation this way, that the units of grams of water will cancel with grams of water. And we'll be left with an answer in terms of moles of water, which is exactly what we want. And we would notice that we would get 55.5. Five zero nine moles of water. You may be familiar with doing the calculation uh, where you determine the molarity of water in water, and you found that the molarity of pure water has a molarity of 55.5. So now we can do the same calculation of glucose, and just recall that glucose has the chemical formula C6H12O6. So 100 grams of glucose. So I abbreviate as GLU, just to save some writing. And we notice that one mole of glucose has a molar mass of 180.16 grams. Again, we always want to verify that our units cancel properly. If we do a calculation and end up with the wrong units or some kind of bizarre units, 
that is a strong indication that we performed the unit conversion improperly and we should go back and double check. So if we do this particular calculation, we get the proper units of moles of glucose and we see that this is equal to 0 0.55506 moles of glucose. So in our solution, we have 55.509 moles of water and 0 0.55506 moles of glucose. To determine the mole fraction of water, we need to find the total number of moles. So we know that the moles of H2O in this particular case is going to be 55.509. The moles of glucose equals 0 0.55506. And we get a total number of moles of 56.1. Six, four. Here we make use of the rule for significant figures for the adding or subtracting of two values, which is slightly different than the rule that we employ for multiplication and division. Here we see that the minimal number of decimal places for the moles of water is three decimal places. So therefore we want to round our answer to only three decimal places. So it tells us that we have a total, this total moles, of 56.164. So now we can calculate the mole fraction of water, which often use the symbol X sub H2O, is equal to the moles of H2O divided by the total number of moles. So we have 55.509 moles divided by 56.164 moles. And since we can cancel the units of moles top and bottom, we notice that we end up getting a unitless answer, which is exactly what we want to get. And when we do that, we get a mole fraction of 0 0.988. we require only one additional piece of information, and that is we need to know the vapor pressure of pure water at a temperature of 32 degrees centigrade. And if we looked it up, we find that it is 35.7 torr. With that in mind, we can use our equation that the vapor pressure of the solvent, water, in a particular solution is going to be equal to the mole fraction of water times the vapor pressure of pure water. One thing I should warn you about now which is a very easy mistake to make. It is very common for students to calculate the mole fraction of the solute rather than the solvent. So it's very important in this equation that no matter which of the two values you calculate that when you employ this particular equation that you use the mole fraction of the solvent. So if we do that, the vapor pressure of the solution is going to be our mole fraction is 0 0.988 times 35.7 Tour, which is the vapor pressure of pure water at the temperature we're interested in which is 32 degrees centigrade. And we notice that we get a value of 35.3 tour. So we notice as we expect from colligative properties that the vapor pressure of the solvent will be reduced when we dissolve some solute 
I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.